Okay, uh, today's an interesting one. This Sunday there was a vigil for the fallen the, uh, and for the hostages uh, by the um, uh, Israeli friendly community here in Manchester. A lot of flags, but uh, there's a very interesting scene towards the end where an incident took place which ch which my camera, sorry, which challenged my ideas of free speech. Um, there was all the British and Israelis there mourning the the fallen, the mourning the the hostages, and uh, a lady came right into the a group of ladies of a certain persuasion came into the middle of the crowd and shouted some slogans. And um, I was with everyone else there. I was like, "How dare they?" You know, like, "Whoa!" How, like, what the, what the, what the f u c k? But uh, straight after, I was like, "Hold on a second. I believe in free speech." So um, it's complicated. Watch the video. Make up your own minds. Well, police horses in a van outside the civil justice center. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. It is Sunday, the twenty second of October. Um, we had the rallies outside the BBC yesterday. You all saw the footage with the slightly, slightly intimidatory, is that even a word, Intimid intimidating. intimidating, thank you, my beautiful assistant Laura gets uh, the correct language out, but uh, today there is a vigil, a vigil of the other side, and we all know why, uh, the worst attack in a long time, and uh, during many unfortunate setbacks along the way. But together as a community, we remain strong and united in our support for the Jewish state. All too often we've had to come together like today, but let's be crystal clear to the wider community of Greater Manchester and those joining us, this is not a war against the innocent Palestinian people who have been subjugated to the control of Hamas ever since Israel left Gaza in 2005 and whom we hope and pray we can one day live with in our part of the struggle for a Palestinian state Hamas don't care about that and just like ISIS and So we've got camera evidence gatherers like we had yesterday you've got sergeants, inspectors um, you might see some dark blue bibs if you come this way the CST is, uh, it's private security that specializes in the Jewish community, which is, you know, it's a thing. Hamas who have brought this war to both Israel and the innocent civilians of Gaza. A large part of this hate has been stoked by the media, with their irresponsible and unobjective reporting of the conflict, and the eagerness of the BBC and Sky, along with others, to swallow the claims of Hamas, their refusal to call them terrorists, their claim that Israel provides all electricity and water to Gaza, when in fact it provides only 50% of the electricity and 10% of the water, and their failure to challenge the chant of from the river to the sea, which means the destruction of the Jewish state has simply been disgraceful. that every single one of you will have felt the same as I. When we watched the disgraceful coverage of the Palestinian Islamic Jihad missile strike on the Al-Akhli hospital on Tuesday night, their skewed and biased coverage of that attack would undoubtedly have led to further attacks against Jews here in the UK. On Thursday night, Meirav Raviv, who has four members of her family, her cousin Karen, Karen's nine-year-old son Ohad, and her aunt and uncle from kibbutz near Oz, being held hostage by Hamas in Gaza, appeared on Sky News with Anna Botting, who has been particularly biased in her commentary, and told her in explicit and emotional terms just how warped their coverage was and reminded her of what happened. These are her words, and I'm sure they sum up exactly how everyone here feels. Yes, I was in contact with them during the attack. I saw your Sky News reports before, and I must tell you, Hamas is ISIS. Don't forget that. Early Saturday morning, 6.30 a.m., a lot of terrorists attacked Israel. They butchered kids, 
They kidnapped kids. They killed the fathers in front of the kids. And then they kidnapped the kids from my aunt and uncle's kibbutz near Oz, which is only two kilometers from the border from Khan Yunis. They took 81 people. The kibbutz is only 350 people. Only 150 people survived from the violence they did. 1,400 Israelis were murdered on Saturday morning, and you are talking about what is happening in Gaza. How dare you? You know that Hamas rules Gaza. Israel has not ruled Gaza for over 18 years. And what did Hamas do with all the money sent to Gaza that Qatar gives them, that Egypt gives them, the help that Israel has provided to them? Rather than taking care of their kids, rather than educating their kids, they are using the money to make weapons and attack Israel. The Israelis won't have a chance of arresting themselves. And they came to say, I'm on the left in Israel. I love peace. I want peace. <laughs> Reading out the names of the 203 hostages Elliot held by Hamas. Ardana, 27. Imbar Beyman. 27. Noy Zafrani, 27. Don't know what's happening here. No idea. Hi, my name's Charlie Veach, and you're watching the Big White Horse Channel. So the White Horses, their friends are coming. Here they come with the Frisian cow coloration. Come on, Frisian cow horses, come say hello to your friends. White horses are excited. Here they come. Here they come. Here. Oh, it's a reunion. All right, let's, let's get let's get a higher shot. Here we go. Hello. It's a horse reunion. Are they friends? They better be friends. Yeah, they're kind of. I don't know, it's a bit of a frosty reunion. I think the two white horses are not sure of these multicolored ones. <laughs> Who? Hello. Really appreciate what you do. Thank you very much, sir. Thank you. Someone's in the crowd shouting Free Palestine when they're remembering the dead here. Very disrespectful. Where are they? Where are they? And who's shouting that? We've gone into Zara. She's hiding in Zara. Excuse me, I'm so sorry. Sorry. The police are having a word with the two ladies trying to oh, trying to uh, upset the vigil. Okay, there's a situation outside Zara five minutes later. Tensions are calming down, people are losing interest, but the police are still speaking to the two ladies inside who uh, shouted free Palestine from the middle of the memorial service. This is a, a drunk area, guys. If you're still standing, you, you, you don't belong here. Go home. This area is for people. Horizontal drinking. And how can you call yourself a true alcohol connoisseur if you're still vertical? So, uh... We're heading up to Manchester Piccadilly train station. There's a lot of uh, buses there. 
Just want to see if it's all gone wrong for the train services. And is that police tape do not cross I see? It's a very sad day for British travel this Sunday, the 22nd of October. It's relentless, the never-ending rail replacement buses. At least this one's a brand new Mercedes. You know, you travel in style. Okay, it takes twice as long. Here is the queue for another bus. These poor, poor people. All they wanted was a train. Bolton. Preston, Lancaster, Scotland to the left, Warrington and Liverpool to the right. Fair enough, fair enough. Not good. I'm not happy with this. I'll see many rail companies advertise on the train or on the internet. Our trains are 94% on time or 87% on time. Yet how come when I ride a train, I'm sure my viewers will agree, how come when we ride the train they're late? 50% of the time. Something isn't adding up. I'll tell you what is adding up though is uh, the incredible amounts of money we pay for this third world service. Ka-ching, ka-ching. Go and strike again, drivers. Where's the women and children at? I'm feeling like a big, brave desert warrior. Damn right, frog. Green gooey monster atop Harvey Nicks. 